All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Michael Penn. I'm a senior director of engineering in Synaptics, responsible for SDK planning, roadmap planning, and development. So uh, today, in today's uh, interview, we try to give you a little bit background story how we started with the Astra SDK development. In the past, Synaptics software team historically is focusing on uh, the Android in operator space. We have AI capability, we have rich multimedia capability. However, software ecosystem is in a closed, sp confined space. With Astra, we bring this open source mindset into our development methodology. We try to open source everything we have so that we have open source communities help to help our software to be more mature, to be better, faster, and more adaptive to this AI world. Today. Are you a maintainer? I am the documentation maintainer. I also participate in code development. However, it's a team collective effort to make so, the Astro. So what do we see here? So on um, this side is my normal daily development environment. So what you see is a VS code with a bunch of uh, files open. I'm debugging a particular issues. That's why, yeah, I hope I can find a solution by end of the day. What is a programming language ha happening? Uh, right now, what you see is a C. However, in Astra software, we support C, we support Python, C++. We can seamlessly stitch all these solutions together. Okay. And do you have like a plan you can show what's happening? Oh, yes, definitely. Uh, what I can show you is uh, at in the early stage, how we designed the whole thing. When we started from Android World, shifting to Astra, first of all, we need to make sure all our GitHub organizations are set up properly. We have CI CD, which is continuous integration, continuous testing, automated QA testing. We want to bake that into our GitHub setup. That's why we have the development setup. We have the staging setup, which is used for QA testing, and we have the rollout set setup in the very end, at the very end. So these are the existing organizations we set up in GitHub. That was the planning from nine months ago, and today you see everything live. For example, this morning, I just got a documentation pull request from GitHub. And this is apparently this is the latest the release note update requested by engineer. And from the green ones are the changes, or exactly the green ones are the changes. Are things changes are newly added. So you can see on the left side it points out with this particular pull request, engineer says, Michael, there are ten files getting modified. Could you please review them and make sure they're okay? Share your comments if you don't agree to some of those changes. All these are done in GitHub's framework now. And we have baked in action. Once I approve his changes, automatically that change becomes live on public GitHub. And there's people contributing around the world? Yes, we have uh, engineers in San Jose. We have engineers in uh, Shanghai, Taiwan, Korea, Bangalore all contributing together to the success of our, of our Astra SDK. Is it a very efficient word, way to collaborate? Yes. So far, I really enjoy my time with uh, development teams around the world. We basically non-stop 24 hours to, to contribute to Astra SDK. And is it like a, a next step? Or what is this part here? So, ah, OK. So I maybe on this side, what you see is a our product, existing product, you can see I'm, I'm debugging the memory utilization for three AI models at the same time, and they're all camera-based AI models. On this side, you see th this is the, the object detection, so you can see that it's able to tell what's in this picture. So uh, right now, we capture you as a person, myself as a person. If this chair somehow is closer, yeah, yeah, oh, then if, yeah that, it shows that's a chair. On nice. the right-hand side, this is a, it's a mobile, you're trying to, yeah, it will yeah. say a mobile phone. Okay. Hopefully, Thank if you we can go. move that, uh, if I yeah. just pull this, uh, probably it will say it's a keyboard. 
Nice. Right. So, so it can recognize a lot of stuff. Right. Exactly. Thanks to the baked-in Edge AI, we're not sending any pictures to the cloud. Everything is right there and holding it. Nice. So basically, you're going from uh, GitHub to live production in one click? In, oh. in rollout, is one click. So in the GitHub public, we have a num number of repositories. And we provide a Docker container to help our end users to compile those into an image. Once that image is in our Makina board, that's what you see. And are there many different things that can be developed and tested in this way? Of course. Uh, since this Astra SDK is nothing but a Linux platform, it's a vehicle for you to do anything that you can think of. So for experienced, for experienced engineers, they can basically take other open source packages and components and build that upon Astra SDK and make whatever software capability available to their particular use cases. What's happening there? Uh, yeah, this is this is what you just what we just saw is the three tracking of the of the AI use cases, three camera AI use cases. And this monitor I'm running a top command. That top command tells me the memory consumption while I'm running here. It's interesting, this little term terminal is on my PC, but it's actually running on the Astro Makina board. Through this serial cable, I'm able to communicate to the Astro board. So now I see really what is happening in terms of a real-time memory consumption on that particular board. Do you yeah. think many of your collaborators have the same setup? Uh, this is typical setup in Synaptics. Uh, so I would assume every engineer who works on Makina SDK development would have the same setup. They may have their personal text editor or software uh, IDEs to, to work with, but my personal preference is VS Code. They may use VI, they may use something else. Do you use some interesting plugins to optimize of, your work on VS Code? Of course. We, you want to show what you have? Uh, I have a Git uh, plugin. Uh, so basically, this is the Git plugin that I use. So basically, it gives me the dynamic source control to interact with the GitHub directly. Do you use any of those AI enhancements oh, of your yes. coding? Yes, we do have Copilot, uh, which I'm not sure whether yeah. if I do something right here, I don't know whether. Yeah. So no, this so is it's not a prompt. Auto completing. Yes, this this is auto completing. So if I do dash one, uh, if I do test done, bi dash. No, this is yeah. the copilot is not to activate. Ah, it's there. So sorry. Yeah. Because I guess uh, there's all kinds of way to be more and more efficient. Yes. In getting new functionalities debugged and also add new functionalities, and to I guess uh, expert uh, programmers can uh, can get even more efficient right now. No? Yes, uh, somehow the the Copilot plugin was enabled. I need to figure yeah. out why. But uh, yes, we do use Copilot uh, quite a lot, and uh, I use this on daily basis. And the best best thing, Copilot couldn't replace the experienced engineer right now. But what I found out is you have repetitive or documentation needs in your code. Copilot does it perfectly for us. And I've seen stuff like Cloud Dev and some other things that just crazy AI stuff. It depends what will be uh, useful for your collaborators. Yes. Uh, right now, I personally haven't had a chance to explore in that area. I primarily use the co uh, MS, uh, Microsoft Copilot to, to do or OpenAI Copilot to do this. And when you were showing the planning before, mm -hmm. uh, was there uh, something for the future? What's next? Ah, OK. So for that, it's more concrete. So this is our planning for next uh, three, four months. You can see for Astra, we have a number of uh, uh, tasks we call epics to be executed for the next four months. So 
and team is really having the common access to this. And who's they, deciding uh, the priority? So I work closely with our marketing team and the sales team to understand customer needs, and we prioritize the number of features that we need to offer to our customers for the next four months, and we do a committee approval for a number of uh, features we want to commit for next uh, release cycle. And when there's more and more customers, there's faster and faster development because everybody collaborates, right? Correct. We, what we try to find out, if we can know all those customers' needs, we can prioritize better. Maybe a common feature is needed by most of our customers. We will prioritize that feature development. And when that is available, majority of our customers will, happy, will be happy because they get the features they expect.